Surf LT Omnific is a tier 6 18 stage collab map made by Nero, QR, and Checkum. Released Wednesday, August 18th, 2012. Its length and difficulty have solidified its status as one of the most legendary maps in surf history. Its unique difficulty curve, tier 1, beginner difficulty on stages 1 to 3, tier 2 to 4 to 6, etc., made the map playable by all but completable by only the best. And tunnels between the stages provided for a minor advantage, allowing surfers to carry speed, most useful for the final three tier 6 stages. However, a select few elite surfers would undertake the unthinkable, finishing Omnific all in one shot, at least five minutes of extremely precise surfing, and do it in record time. In truth, the history of Omnific is like a mountain. From afar we can see its parts, but most importantly, its peak. Despite advancements in technique, endurance, and external tools, Omnific will continue to challenge top surfers for years to come. This is the world record history of Surf LT Omnific. On release, it took top surfers more than a day to complete the map. Morning, regarded as one of the best surfers of his time, took the prize, going on to set the first long-standing time on August 17th, 2012. Morning's run wasn't a no-fail, a run without failing a stage or resetting, but neither was Rain's. Rain would first beat the record seven months later before lowering the record by another minute on May 31st, 2013. Like Morning, Rain used speed from the first four stages to skip the majority of stage 5. Surfers simply used the first ramp to return to the start, which also happened to be the beginning of stage 6. Unfortunately, Rain's run had several issues. Poor strategies on stages 10 and 11, as well as a fail on stage 13. Tragically, stage 17 would cost Rain almost 30 seconds, just barely missing the end. The best of runners would fail the same way in the next 8 years. Just a few months later, top surfer Rob Tavari would take the record by almost 25 seconds. His run featured a direct entry into the hole on stage 11, but sadly failed twice. Once at the end of stage 14, and the other at the start of 16. He nonetheless broke the sub-7 barrier that had stood since 2012. Rain quickly clapped back four months later, achieving the first ever no-fail on the map and saving over 27 seconds. Rain's run did suffer from a couple major problems, losing hundreds of units at the start of stage 6 and the end of stage 16. Rain also used a suboptimal strategy for stage 11, perhaps a necessary sacrifice for the legendary no-fail. Thus, Rain put a mandate on riskier strategies, raising the bar and installing himself in surf history. Morning, Rautavari, and Rain's runs paled in comparison to the next generations. The succeeding class would have to undo the mistakes of those before them, no longer relying on a simple no-fail to set the record. None other than Trafflecopter was the first to grab the reins. Already a legendary surfer by this point, Truffle set his 559 on June 29, 2014. Truffle used an improved stage 5 route, flicking directly off the first ramp. With the extra units and a cleaner run, Truffle chips off time for most of the next 12 stages, notably skipping the first ramp on stage 13. By stage 15, the unit difference is obvious, using a head hit never before seen in run. And at the end, Truffle finishes with only 10 seconds left on the map, a close call but nonetheless a world record. On December 22nd, 2014, Nim beats the map by 0.3, likely considered faux pas at the time as most prior runs had improved by at least 20 seconds. While we don't know a ton about his run, it looks as though he was more than 4 seconds ahead until stage 18. This may explain why he chose to finish the run instead of resetting for a better time. Regardless, Silver Thing, our resident Reddit moderator and favorite washed surfer, would take the lead just a couple months later. Silver employed an improved strategy on stage 5, boarding from the close side of the ramp instead. This saved him time on the stage and gave him a great unit advantage. He also squeezed more units out of the holes on stage 9 by spinning, allowing him to later perform the stage 11 direct entry. With this much speed, you would have expected Silver Thing to absolutely destroy the record. Unfortunately, he loses almost all his speed on the start of stage 12, going on to beat the world record by 3.5 seconds. However, in the background, a storm was coming. Trafficopter has been improving his strategies, spending hours in save lock practicing the map. He spent months on and off stream grinding, pulling hundreds of viewers and attention to the game. 
Finally, on April 24th, 2015, Travel would take the record by over 25 seconds. Travel employed Silver Things improved Stage 5 route, allowing him to later perform the first Stage 8 skip in run. This skip saved at least 5 seconds alone. He also used an extremely precise strategy on Stage 10, landing directly on the starting boost and jumping on the spine of this ramp to reduce airtime. This gave him even more units while still saving time on the stage. The unit difference in the second half is just amazing, featuring the elusive direct Stage 11. By Stage 17, he is zooming, and with an extra clean entry on Stage 18, Troffle beats the individual stage record while in run. After hours and hours of work, he had done it. Let's fucking go. GG. Done. Over. Minus 26. Congrats, done. Congrats. Let's fucking go, dude. Fuck yes. The videos for his record amassed almost 700,000 views combined, catching the eyes of big streamers like Summit 1G. His record seemed infallible to the untrained eye, but time would show that his run was far from perfection. The first to the throne Trafficopter was another legend, the Korean surfer Sinsa. Sinsa is famous for a career of top tier surfing and some unbelievable runs, such as his Juice World record that still ranked 3, and his Tronic 33.4 that has stood as world record since 2019. His 524-103 is a story of nuance, as much of his advantage came from a new strategy on stage 2, briefly riding the right transition ramp. This gave him extra units and saved him 0.8 seconds on stage 2 alone, but he would carry the speed throughout, chipping off time for nearly every stage except 11 and 15. However, the stage 2 strategy Sinsa used was extremely inconsistent, making subsequent records more difficult. Then, Roldar, ranked 3 overall on KSF and owner of more than 50 world records, was the next. Strangely, Roldar would commit a similar faux pas to Nim, beating the world record by 0 .08 on a 5 minute map. However, a closer look at Roldar's run explains why. Roldar had an immaculate stage 9, generating a ton of units for the next stages. It tragically, 1.5 seconds ahead of world record, Roldar undershoots on stage 18, tapping the ramp and losing speed. Despite the almost trivial improvement, it would take Sinsa more than 7 months to retake. Yet the wait was more than worth it. Sinsa completed the first Stage 2 no-spin, saving just as much time as his previous run and gaining ridiculous units. But how was he able to do this? Well, apparently, the route was changed per request of Travelcopter, who hinted at going for a retake himself, and after discussion amongst pros, a boost was added to Stage 2. This eliminated the extremely inconsistent strategy that Sinsa had used, greatly increasing the frequency of world record viable runs. Since his units were just astounding, going faster on nearly every stage. While on stage 12, he did lose some units from a poor head surf, but made up for it with his incredible end on stage 14. It all culminated in a simply sublime stage 16, opting not the head surf and gaining so much speed that he touched the ceiling that all other surfers have missed. By the time he arrived at stage 18, he was 4.3 seconds ahead, although the stage was actually slower than Roldar's. There is at least another solid .08 in this, said Wayne, and so there was. On July 1st, 2019, Roldar would become the current world record holder for Surf LT Omnific, and further establish himself as one of the greatest surfers of all time. I asked Roldar a few questions about the run. Big thanks, by the way. How hard was the run, I asked. He explained that going for world record was very time consuming, but not exactly difficult. Shorter records of his, like Surf Ambient and JV, were in his opinion harder. The length of Omnific drastically increases the time needed to take the record. Failing Omnific 10,000 times would be far worse than failing Surf Tronic 10,000 times. And does he expect the record to be taken? He said it could be Caffrey, who we've seen running the map recently. But regardless, if the record is beaten, he said it's unlikely that it will go for a retake. He realized that most fails happen on the last three tier 6 stages, and would force thousands more 4-5 to five minute attempts. At 5.15-134, Roldar has held the record for just over 2 years. Let's take a look at the run. On stage 2, Roldar is close to optimal, saving 0.2 on this stage alone. On stage 3, he leaves as low as possible on the last ramp to maximize units. 
His stage 9 is amazing, flicking earlier to max out downward velocity and using a specific collision to carry more speed in the tightest spin. The units from stage 9 help him with a cleaner stage 11, a massive head surf on stage 12, and an improved head surf on stage 16. While his stage 14 was less than optimal, he makes up for it with an amazing stage 17, allowing him to head hit into the transition. And with that, Roldar had taken the record. The crowd rejoiced. We've been climbing for a long time. Let's take a break. During the last few years, surfers have created TASSES for Omnific tool-assisted speedruns that allow them to train together checkpoints into a full run. These runs were theoretically optimal, displaying strategies that could be used in future world records. The first of these is by Doinkface in April of 2016. This is regarded as a mediocre task by most, but features the first stage 11 skip. If done and run, it would save at least 5 seconds, and likely way more due to the increased units. The next was released by Cremalia in 2017, displaying the Stage 2 skip, Stage 4 head surf, and most importantly the Stage 6 skip. With enough speed, surfers could theoretically skip the loop portion of this stage entirely. While it's unknown whether this skip is speedrun viable, it possibly represents the next step in Omnific's history. Further, Cromalia theorized two possible skips on Stage 17, both of which could save several seconds. Poldar himself released a couple tasks as well, building on Cromalia's strategies. The first simply had good units with deep cuts on stage 11, 14, and 17, while the second featured entirely new techniques. Roldar skips the transition platform between stage 8 and stage 9, B hops the spine at stage 14's end for a perfect angle, and opts not to do Cromalia's first stage 17 skip for extra units. His task clocked in at 4.51 time previously thought to be the absolute limit. That was until Batman. A resident cheater and COD4 YouTuber created the second most sublime run ever seen. Rather than simply recording inputs like past runners had, Batman programmed a tool himself that generates inputs and can be edited bit by bit for the perfect run. His stages 1-3 to three are just insane. By stage 6, he's well over a second faster than the world record. His stage 9 is especially fascinating. With perfect spins, he leaves stage 9 with 350 more units than the world record. Although this is extremely difficult, it's not unreasonable to believe that 1 to 200 more units could be squeezed out of this stage alone. And of course, the following stages are done extremely well, but nobody could expect what Batman did next. With 1650 units into stage 17, Batman performs one of the greatest skips of all time. humans could somehow generate enough units to do this, perhaps with some suboptimal lines before for more speed, they could save several seconds on this stage alone. But not even Batman could top what happened next. The never deviating streamer so far spent tens of hours going for the no fail on Omnific. Other content creators like Bokuma and Truck Truck had achieved this as well, with Truck Truck's run amassing over 100,000 units. It's all over, folks. Like the world record, a no-fail is extremely difficult. And after just a few days, Soap reached this milestone and achieved a rank 13. But he wasn't finished there. Oh, it's a fucking... Pushing forward in an attempt to reach the top 10. At a cost. See, Soapfar had allowed his viewers to bet virtual currency on his play sessions. And these sessions never ever went smoothly. Every time he failed to get the top 10, people got more and more channel points. As a result, top tier surfer Chipsy was ballin' with well over 1 million channel points, and was able to redeem the bald reward from Soap's channel. And to make matters worse, it was the day before Soap's IRL stream with Mapper Granis. There was even a little debacle regarding top surfer Rafa. Rafa refunded! 
to clarify, there was no $500 refund. This was all for channel points, and Rafa's reward was redundant. The bald reward included a fresh eyebrow shave. But the clip did grab over 45,000 views, so nice job, Justipo. Nice. Fearless and hairless, Soap pushed on, often entering a trance to maximize his cognance and brain flow. At one point, so tragically failing a run 14 seconds ahead of rank 10, likely rank 7 or 6. At other points, we are afraid our favorite streamer had lost his mind. That is until the final day. With only two minutes left, Soap was on a banger run. He was already 10 seconds ahead of rank 10 with more than enough units to complete. When suddenly, Matthew said those fateful words. Don't think about your heart rate rising or the trance. It was clear there was nothing left to give, and just before all hope was lost, and Soap was about to quit, If everybody agrees on one very last run because Matthew ruined it, if everybody agrees, everybody agrees, one more last one, and we'll, oh, nobody's disagreeing, oh easy, oh easy, okay. So far, his final run on Omnific was perfectly optimal. Absolute precision with no old strategies, lost speed, or missed skips. In reality, Soap showed how hard the pressures of streaming and interacting with viewers can be on a surfer. When constant focus is necessary for such a long period of time, just speaking can cause the run to end. And on top of that, Soap and his team are pulling over 200 viewers per stream, bringing more eyes to the game every day. Thanks to you and all the other runners from the video. So enjoy this clip. Rank 10 is easy, baby, easy. It's so fucking easy, easy, baby. Easy. We're finally at the peak, boys. We made it. Bask in its glory. Wait, before you click away, I want to give a huge shout out to Manana who helped me make this video and Roldar who was kind enough to answer my questions, as well as Soapbar for the streams and clips. And of course, the many hands that have helped KSF Records, Prealitin, and Warble over the years. All these links are in the description below, as well as all the other footage owners. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out the first world record history video I made on the left. Or if you've already seen that, check out the Surf's Upside Down 3 recap from July on the right. Either way, good luck sliding those triangles.